Well, hello, welcome back to Tail Three Cabins. It's been a pretty good year for our bucket list so far. Karen and I have been able to see a rocket launch down in Florida. We got to see a total solar eclipse back in April, right in our own backyard. And just a few weeks ago, we got to see a G5 geomagnetic storm triggering auroras as far south as Florida. So after that storm, there was quite a buzz. And in fact, that whole weekend, they thought that there were going to be more chances for people in the lower 48 to see the auroras on Saturday, Sunday, and maybe even on Monday. And those possibilities pretty much fizzled out for everybody, except people up in maybe northern Michigan and some of the northern states that border Canada. So today I want to discuss my wealth of knowledge on uh, if you're a newbie and you want to see these auroras, and it should be a very quick video. So during those auroras, I hope you got to see them. It was on May 10th. It was a Friday evening. But I talked to a lot of my friends and neighbors, but a lot of them said they went outside, they took a quick peek, they looked up and they didn't see anything. And they probably made a couple mistakes in doing it to that method. So why am I bringing this up? Well, seeing the Northern Lights has always been a dream of mine. When I was on the fire department, just before I was gonna retire, I talked to Karen and we thought we would take a trip to Iceland specifically to go see the Northern Lights, but there's a lot of other things to see in Iceland also. So we thought it'd be a pretty neat trip to tour that island. At the time I retired, COVID was in full swing and that put a kibosh on a lot of travel plans, a lot of uh, airliners and flights and rules and restrictions. And we decided that we would uh, just cancel that, put it on the back burner. So I started doing more and more research and I was wondering if there was a way to see the Northern Lights without having to travel to Alaska, without having to fly to Iceland and Greenland. What the chances were to see it somewhere in the Northern 48 states. So I thought I would break this video video down into five categories. Number one, where to see them, your best chances of seeing them, when to see them, what aids to use when you're predicting them, what to expect when they're visible, and how to capture them. So where to see them. If you're familiar with the 45th parallel, which is a latitude line, circles the whole globe, but specifically in the United States, it pretty much uh, hits right in around the middle of Michigan to hit North Dakota, Montana, Washington State, upper part of Maine. So if you're above that 45th parallel or near it, there are about 50 or 60 times a year where you have a chance to see the auroras in that specific location. You might not have to be above that location. You might have to be uh, just near it. Maybe you'll just see the auroras on the horizon if you're a little bit lower than that. For instance, I live in Northern Ohio in our neighboring state of Michigan. If you are in certain parts of the state of Michigan, there are 60 times throughout the year where it's possible to see the auroras. In fact, there's a very large Facebook group called the Michigan Aurora Chasers, and I'm gonna to touch on that a little bit in a moment. Now, May 10th was a once in a lifetime event. In fact, they're saying that it might've been once in 500 year event, that there hasn't been a strong storm like that in about 500 years. The auroras were seen as far south as Florida, which is pretty much unheard of. And there are times periodically throughout the year where you will get these uh, predictions that you're gonna be able to see the auroras in some of the lower 48 states. And they'll say as far down as my state of Ohio, or even down in Kentucky, or possibly Tennessee. And a lot of times when they predict that, it never ends up being true. I pay a lot of attention to spaceweather.com and I see what the solar activity is like. And when they have these predictions, I keep a close eye on it. A lot of times predicting this is a, a timing event. And when they think a strong storm is coming, they can't really tell you down to the hour exactly when it's gonna be. If they're predicting you're gonna see some auroras in the lower 48, it's possible that that strong storm is gonna hit in the daytime where you're not gonna be able to see it and it'll be done by the time it becomes evening or night. One other thing, traveling to some of these other countries to see the auroras is a crapshoot also. There's no guarantee there'll be auroras at the time you go. And a place like Iceland is cloudy about 70, 75% of the time. So even if there are auroras up there, there's a chance that you could be clouded over and not even see them. So now you know the areas that you need to go to to possibly see the aurora. And now it's just a matter of timing. 2024 and 2025 puts the sun at its solar max. The solar max is a regular period of heightened solar activity that occurs once every 11 years. Right now we are in that period. So even though May 10th was an incredible treat, there are still some chances of some more tasty morsels to appear up in the sky. 
So to help you figure out the chances of seeing an aurora, you need a couple aids. And I use a, a couple apps. They basically give you a lot of the same information, but I like to use the Aurora Forecast app just because uh, it has a nice little live view model and uh, you can manipulate the globe and see exactly where the auroras are and kind of give you an idea if they're overhead or if they may be in the horizon. They also have a forecaster on here and it'll kind of give you a forecast for the next three days. They monitor the sun's activity and just like on May 10th, they knew that this was coming and they predicted it was gonna be peaking at two in the morning. Another app I like is called Aurora Alerts and I kind of like the layout of this one right on the front page itself. It gives you statistics of exactly what's going on with the sun. It gives you a KP index and a BZ index. And for example, on May 10th, the KP was predicted to be an eight on a scale of zero to nine. And it turned out that on May 10th that it actually peaked to nine and that's the highest KP that you can get. Now, in order to see the Northern Lights though, you also need the BZ index to be in the negative and the uh, lower that negative number, the better. So usually they like to see minus five or minus 10. Well, I believe that evening on May 10th, it was minus 35 and I have a screenshot, I'll put it on there. It might've actually been minus 45. And then one more app that I use is just simply called Aurora. It basically tells you what your chances are right on top of what the likelihood of seeing the Aurora would be in your location and it has some other features. Some of the apps will show you live pictures of the sun, so you can monitor um, if there's solar flares and how active the sun is. Anyways, um, that's basically the layout of that app. Also has a graph for a forecast on it. And when they were forecasting May 10th, they thought it was gonna peak at uh, two in the morning, and I was all prepared to go out to uh, Lake Erie, the shores of Lake Erie, I was told my wife Karen has said, well, if this is gonna be what they said it is, I'm gonna set up shop on the shores of Lake Erie. I'm gonna go in between Cleveland and Sandusky because those are two large cities that probably have a lot of light pollution. And I was gonna be about 30 miles away from each one of those in the middle, looking north because I figured that if it was gonna be a bust, I might still be able to see it over the shores of Lake Erie. So their prediction was to peak at two in the morning. I told my wife I was gonna go out there at 10 and I was gonna stay out till about three in the morning and I'd probably be home at about four and she was not having any of it. But um, as I kept watching the numbers throughout the afternoon, it started looking more and more like it was gonna start peaking earlier. And I was also monitoring what was going on in Europe and they were sending back some pretty nice pictures of the auroras from Scotland and places that don't normally see them. So I told Karen that I was gonna leave as soon as the sun was going down and I was gonna to try to get out there around sunset. When she heard that, she decided she would come with me because it didn't sound like we were going to be out till four in the morning. We got there at sunset, looking over the lake. It was, the sun went down and I started looking in the sky. And from all the numbers, I thought that you would still be able to see something because the numbers were so great, but we weren't seeing anything. Starting to get a little bit darker. We were starting to lose some of that twilight. And I started taking pictures with my camera and nothing was showing up on the camera. About every five minutes I'd snap another picture just to use the camera as an aid in case there's something that I couldn't see. And then as it got close to about 10 o'clock when I started seeing little flickers of light and I pointed out to Karen and she didn't really notice it or couldn't, couldn't discern it up in the sky. And I took a picture and sure enough, it was uh, the Aurora. At 10.05 PM, the sky in front of us and above us started emitting a white light that looked like a huge cascading waterfall descending all around us. It was happening everywhere. So it started happening. It was happening everywhere, uh, in front of us, above us, behind us. Eventually that white light turned to green and you could discern reds and you can discern purples with the naked eye. And we just started flashing off pictures left and right. Karen was taking pictures, I was taking pictures. I had a couple of cameras set up to do time lapses. But these predictions are really spot on. So their initial prediction was at 2 a.m. and it appeared that it had peaked right around 10.05, 10.15, and it lasted probably about a good hour, and then it just started fading away. You could still pick it up with your camera, and it was there for most of the evening after that, well until the early hours of the morning, but most of the time you needed your camera to see them. It flared up a little bit more up in Michigan compared to Ohio, 
but during that flare-up between 10 and 11 o'clock it was seen in states like florida southern california just unprecedented where people were able to see this so as i said may 10th was a treat and it was a pretty obvious treat to go out there and look some of the mistakes like my neighbors made going out there is number one they just walked outside looked up looked around and didn't see nothing well they didn't put the time in sometimes people will go out to look for auroras and they know there's a good chance of seeing them They'll put out a lounge chair, they'll get a sleeping bag, they'll start looking at the northern portion of the sky, and they'll be there for the duration. They might sit there for hours before the auroras appear. And if they do appear, it might only be for five or 10 minutes and then they're gone. Sometimes they'll come back. It's very unpredictable in that manner. So my neighbors who just stepped outside really quick, went back in and called it a night. A few minutes could have been the difference between them seeing something spectacular or uh, you know just ignoring what was going on outside. So let's talk about capturing them. My neighbors who went to Iceland said that they could not see them with the naked eye and that people in our group had cameras and they were able to see it off of the viewfinder of, of other cameras in their group, but they didn't have any uh, technology at the time. I don't think they had a good smartphone that they could take a, a picture with. If you have a smartphone, if, if it's a recent smartphone, you're golden, you're good to go. That's really all you need. Uh, it's nothing fancy, nothing spectacular. The phone apps work very good on themselves alone. The only thing that I would recommend you buy is a tripod. Because if you want to use the night mode on your smartphones, specifically if you have an iPhone, there's a night mode on there where you could open the shutter up for 30 seconds. You probably don't want to do 30 seconds with an Aurora, but if you do want to take pictures of the Milky Way, certain stars, and, and um, certain parts of the night sky, holding the shutter for 30 seconds will give you a lot of detail, let in a lot of light, especially if you're in a very dark area. So you're going north, you want to find a dark spot. The less light pollution, the better. You want to have a nice clearing open to the sky, especially towards the north. So on the lakeshore like I went to, or a nice big open field, or on top of a hill or a mountain, and uh, as long as you got a nice view of the northern horizon. You've got your smartphone, you've got a tripod, and if you're into doing time lapses, I recommend if you have a GoPro, GoPros work really good for time lapses. I use a DJI Action Cam and I have a DJI Pocket, Pocket 2. I'm using a Pocket 3 right now to film this, but the Pocket 2 also is capable of uh, opening the shutter for a long time and doing time lapse exposures. So I did set up my Pocket 2, and the settings I used was uh, the ISO was at 1600. I had the shutter for each individual picture stay open for four seconds, and then I took a picture every five seconds, and I let it go for about an hour. And you can get a good idea. This isn't uh, by no means really, really professional, but these cameras aren't very expensive, and they'll capture the memories for you, and you'll be able to share it with your friends and just something that you can look back on. Now, what did we see on May 10th? We were able to see the whiteness of the Northern Lights start at first, and then we did see colors. Were the colors as vibrant as in our pictures? No, like our eyes aren't capable of letting enough light in for us to be able to see how vibrant the colors really are. But we did see reds, we did see purples, we did see greens. It, it was just a, a little bit duller of color. And I'll give you an example right here of kind of what we were seeing compared to what we were able to capture on our pictures. So if you do head north, you do find a dark spot, chances are that there could be auroras up there. Use your camera, use your phone to look first. Maybe you're not seeing anything with the naked eye, but your phone's gonna pick it up before you do. A lot of times, like I said, it'll be on the horizon. And if you're lucky enough, if the numbers are high enough, it could be overhead. Now they predicted these auroras to continue on for the rest of that weekend, May 10th, 11th, and the 12th. And the 11th and 12th were pretty much a bust in Ohio. They still saw them up in Michigan. They still saw them up around the 45th parallel. Another thing you wanna be careful when you're taking your pictures, you don't wanna to have too many city lights in your foreground because that'll wash out the rest of your picture. So the darker the better. Now I sent my drone up and I sent it for a, a four second exposure looking north but i had the city lights of cleveland to contend with which which kind of spoiled the picture but i did manage to capture a little bit of the aurora on i believe sunday night which would have been may 12th and it was just for probably a five minute period while i had the drone up 
and I took several pictures and most of them it wasn't there and then for a, a short period of time it was there but it was very faint had I been to the lake shore it might have looked a little bit better had I been in a darker area it would have been even better than that and had I been up in Michigan it probably would have been just as good as what I saw on May 10th here in Ohio and when you're capturing pictures, you might want to think about what's in your foreground. Typically you want to have a huge open sky. Maybe you want to have a lighthouse in the foreground or a nice tree or yourself. We happened to be on the shore of the Lake Erie and there were a lot of fishermen there. So we got a fisherman in one of our pictures. So you might want to make your shot a little bit interesting. Doing yourself isn't that hard, especially if you have a smartphone. I'd set mine up on the tripod. I can control my phone with my Apple Watch, set it for night mode, and then stand in front of it, and then click on my watch to activate a three second countdown, get ready for the picture to be taken, and just gotta stand there for four or five seconds and motionless. Now if you're in an area that's gonna possibly have aurors, and maybe it's gonna be too cold that night, or you just don't wanna lose the sleep, well, during a time lapse is a good way to go. So if you do have a GoPro, or like I have the Pocket 2, or you can even use your phone to set up a time lapse. Hopefully it's in a, a safe area where no one's gonna mess with it, but you're gonna take your camera, put it on a tripod, and you can set a time lapse to go for four, five, six hours over the evening, and that way it will capture everything for you. When you wake up in the morning, you can review that time lapse. Maybe you'll find that you caught something at 2, 2.30 in the morning, and you'll have gotten a good night's sleep, and you didn't catch pneumonia. And you also wanna let your eyes adjust too. When my neighbors pop their heads outside, their eyes probably were not adjusted to the night sky, and they're still adjusted to the indoor lighting. Maybe they were watching TV. So a lot of times you look up and you might see a couple stars when you do that at night, but if you actually stand out there for a longer period of time, it seems like all of a sudden there's more stars up there that weren't before. So you need to let your eyes adjust. If you're going to a place with a lot of other sky watchers, there is an etiquette. Be kind when it comes to light. If you got a bright LED flashlight, don't turn it on or move it around or flash it at people. Actually, don't even turn it on at all. A lot of Aurora chasers will use a little headlamp that have the red LED light on, so it's not gonna disturb people so much, and it's not gonna ruin your night vision if you turn a light on like an LED light would. So if the Auroras are on your bucket list, especially if you live in the northern U.S., get started with a few apps. Check out Space Weather on the web. Find a group like Michigan Aurora Chasers. Now they're on Facebook and they have over 100,000 people in their group. I'm one of them. It's pretty neat because when there is an event happening, there will be people all over Michigan taking pictures, posting them, saying what their location is, where they were looking. Could they see it with the naked eye? Could they only see it with the camera? And it, it's a pretty good group to follow because even though maybe you don't live up there or maybe you don't intend to travel up there for a while and it, it gives you a better idea when your chances are good and when your chances are not so good so just watching them do trial runs a lot of times uh, the administrators of that site will put up an alert the saying it's go time or we got very good chances that we're going to see them down as low as uh, the Michigan Ohio border or it's going to be up in the upper peninsula of Michigan or it's going to be by the 45th parallel. It's a very good site to watch. I'm sure there's some other ones out there maybe Wisconsin and Minnesota, Montana. This is just for newbies. I didn't want to get too technical on why the auroras happen and, and what the science part of it is. There's plenty of places on YouTube and there's plenty of web pages and magazine and book articles on why the auroras happen. Still, there's so much to learn about it, how they predict it the best of their ability. And like I said, their predictions uh, give you a heightened sense of awareness, but it still is not uh, actually the weather people are better at predicting when it's gonna rain than when the auroras are gonna appear around here. But I appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed and subscribe to these videos. Click on that little bell when you wanna know when a new one is coming out. And keep an eye on us. And I'll be back with a project, a honeydew list next week. Take care, everybody.